my lords, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome to episode number nine of the O Canada Let's Play Transport Fever 2 series. We've been making fairly solid progress so far, as indicated by both our earnings and our current bank account balance. We've been working in the past few episodes in the Rocky Mountains on our freight lines, setting up some steel production. So we've had to ship in some iron ore and some coal and then get the steel that's been produced delivered out and that's now being dropped off here to the industrial park for Calgary. It's not being consumed yet by the goods factory because we have no plastic that it also needs but it does have some in stock as we can see. That is steel I mean obviously. So that train and those trains will continue to do that now for the rest of their lives quite happily even though the steel isn't being used for anything at this point so it's a nice way to make a bit of money and to pad out our bank balance so we can focus on other aspects of the uh, build. Right, one thing I want to do today as we mentioned previously is start some passenger rail lines as well and obviously the, the logical starting point is going to be in Calgary because that is the capital city. Um, we're going to put the station in the central district here and we're going to head I think first of all to Cochrane up here. So let's go ahead and get started straight away. There's no point standing on ceremony. So we're going to want a passenger station. Uh, it's going to be, obviously we've been the capital city, it's going to be a large station with multiple platforms. So to start off with, we're just going to go straight overkill and go for six platforms then six tracks. Um, in terms of the ideal location for it, if, you have, if we do have it over this side of the city, we are away from the residential areas, so that's going to help with the noise pollution aspect of the trains. And all we'll have to do is set up a bus service or a metro service from the residential district uh, through to the train station, but that's easily done. So let's go ahead and put the train station down now. I've pointed it that direction because as we're heading first of all to Cochrane, we want to be heading this way. So that gives us a natural guide, if you know what I mean, to head that way. So let's not waste any time here let's go ahead and get straight started we don't want to be heading downwards because obviously in the very near future we're going to be bridging over this river here so we'll keep him flat uh, for the initial run out of the station like so and then we'll continue at this sort of elevation like that and then the next thing we're going to tackle is bridging over this river so if we put a bridge in like that, that keeps the waters navigable. If we do want to bring in some ships in the near future, we still have that option if we, as I said, want to take it. Now, how do we want to get ourselves up to Cochrane is the next question. Obviously, we do have to contend with travelling past northwest Calgary, so we do want to be mindful of emissions and noise pollution from our trains as they're heading on their way to Cochrane. Now one possibility is to actually tunnel because the height of our track here we are lower than the ground on which our district sits so if we were to head like this we could put in a tunnel that goes straight underneath the district of south sorry north well, I can't remember what it is let's have a look is it northwest yes northwest Calgary and that will obviously ensure we have no noise pollution from our trains that are going to affect the city as they pass by. Of course it does rule out the possibility of linking a station into this line, however we could have a branch off here and have a station somewhere in this sort of area, just a small station for Northwest Calgary or we could just stick to Metro and trams to get them over to the main station over here. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, we can now just continue with our primary task which is to head this track up towards the city of Cochrane. So we want to now start climbing upwards but we want to do it over such a distance that the elevation change and the gradient in the track isn't too severe and if possible we don't want to have a crossing over this rail line. We may as well since we've got a tunnel here just carry on with the tunnel and let him tunnel underneath before we resurface so if we set the track to that elevation, that gives us the required tunnel while also ensuring we are still climbing upwards. So we'll be emerging from the ground, hopefully in the not too distant future. 
Now we'll just switch that to allow the game to select the the gradient. And it has, as if you, if you look here, when we stretch it out, the slope of the gradient is actually decreasing because it's being spread out over a much larger distance. So there we go. That's where our trains can emerge from the tunnel. It is quite a long tunnel, perhaps even arguably excessively so, but it's done now and we can afford such a large tunnel thanks to our freight lines in the Rocky Mountains. So if we're going to set those lines up, we may as well reap the fruits of our labour and be a little bit more extravagant. Okay, so the next obstacle we have to tackle is this freight line here as well as deciding where in Cochrane we would like the passenger station to go. Now I think we're going to be best served situating the station outside of the town. And I think we're going to be best served putting it up on the top of the hill up here. Because we could then just have a road connection with some transport links up to this station to allow the people to get on board and get in and around the city once they disembark at Cochrane. So let's opt for something like that. And I'm going to aim it this sort of direction. I want to point it a little bit further towards Bottrell because chances are in the future we're going to have a train service over to Bottrell as well, which starts or which you know includes Cochrane in its route and its line. Let's have a look here. So it's given us another tunnel which is fine. The gradient is quite steep, which is less fine. However, just because of the nature of the landscape here, I do think that's by and large going to be pretty unavoidable. So we'll just have to go with it. There we go. So we now have the connection between the two cities. We'll leave the trains alone for the time being, and now we'll turn our attention to setting up a transport link to the stations so that the people can get in and out. I'm going to go for the largest possible in terms of length with 30 meters. And I'm also going to go for four platforms. Now I don't think it's possible to get a connection directly off of a passenger station. As we can see here, the little pathways aren't appearing. Although if we put it there, we do have a connection as we can see we get more than one connection point it doesn't look like it so dealer's choice we'll put it that side it doesn't really make that much difference if we're honest and then we want another exit point there so the trams can head straight on through in a nice circuit style setup and what we want to do now is naturally connect this station to the existing road network that we have for Cochrane now the question is how do we handle this freight line? Ideally we don't want a level crossing because we don't want any potential slowdown where we can avoid it. So we're no, not we're not doing that. I thought if we arch the road, how would that look? And it looks frankly ridiculous. So we won't do it that way. Instead we'll give ourselves a tight radius here. I think we'll stay flat and level because that might encourage the game to provide us with a bridge. Indeed it does. It only needs to be a two pillar bridge to be honest. It's only a small bridge. But the question is now of course are we going to have enough room to get from this elevation down to this sort of elevation. Bearing in mind we're also going down this fairly steep hill as well. So we'll have to monitor that as we progress. But for now, we'll see what we can do. We can remove the elevation or the slope on this road a little. That's about the bare minimum we can get while still retaining a two pillar bridge. So we'll accept that. And now we want to see what we can do in terms of bringing this road down into Cochrane. So now if we tell the game to determine our, determine the gradient for us, what we could do is we could curve down that way we're increasing not the surface area but the distance of the road which enables us to bleed off the gradient a little nicer however as we can see it is quite excessive but that is very very excessive if we take it out a little bit 
and just take some of the gradient out of it. Not much, because obviously we are wanting to head downwards. Sort of like that, I think. And then can we now head down here? And can we get a decent connection point? Let's have a look. Now, the problem with that is this junction is going to be very tight. However, it is providing a fairly okay gradient on our road, which is probably the primary concern here. So let's go ahead and just take it. Now, this has created a bit of a weird lump here in this road which we can get rid of if we just pause it briefly and then delete this back just to about there and then replace it with a new road we should hopefully no it's still giving us that quite bizarre sort of oh no we are not building a ski ramp let's increase that just a touch are we heading in nicely i think we are now let's see if that will connect without the weird sort of lump. Yes, it does. That's a lot nicer. There we go. Now, obviously, we have electrified it with a tram line because we are going to use this road to get our trams up to the station. So we can resume the game now. There's no need to keep it paused any longer. Now we need to determine where in the city we'd like to run our tram. Now, do we also want a central exchange in the city? Possibly yes. The question is where could we fit it in? I mean it could go here. Sort of like there. That should work. And then we can connect it into the street. Quite simply like so. However we didn't electrify it. So we need to upgrade that to electrified road. We're also going to need obviously a second street access point there and hopefully that has now left us enough room to have a decent connection we can get rid of that a decent connection point onto this road indeed it has and now we can switch back to upgrading so if we have our tram run down this way like so it can head into our central exchange point here and then we can route in back out this way Perhaps along the river's edge would be quite pleasant. And then we want to run it out this way. Okay, that's going to remove a building, which is disappointing. But if it's what we have to do, then so be it. And what we'll do now is we'll set in a connection from the other exit of our passenger station up here. And we'll head that down to maybe to that junction there. And that'll give... A natural loop for our trams to follow around the city now we have the trams fully connected so what we can do now is we could purchase a tram depot to put in this area and if we keep it out of town perhaps up here I'm gonna set it back a bit so we can put our own connection point in that way we can remove any traffic lights that may appear to keep traffic flowing a little better and now we want to start renaming the terminals that we've just put in. So this will be Cochrane Exchange. The train station will just be Cochrane. And the platform here, or the passenger station up here, will be Cochrane Station Exchange or in Interchange. Because we are interchanging between transportation modes, between tram and or bus. And the trains so we'll, if we also spell it right that would obviously go a long way so we still have a connection as we can see once you click one the other does get highlighted that's what we want to see so now we can put in the tram line itself so we may as well go ahead and put a few extra stops in and around the town while we're here it would be foolish not to really and we're going to have a tram that runs in both directions. So we'll put the stations or the, the tram stops on both sides of the road. Sort of like that, yep. And then from there you're just going to head straight up to here. And then you're going to head back down. And your first stop 
now. I want you to, yeah, we'll put the first stop. In fact, just take that back just a touch and I'll explain why in a moment. I want the first stops to be there. Don't want to be stopping on this bit because we don't want our goods wagons that are bringing in food to get stuck behind a tram that's waiting at a station to pick up passengers. And the reason I set it this way back is because if we had the station or the stop, say, in this area where these trees are, there's a possibility that if we have a couple of trams waiting, it's going to block the vehicles from getting access down this side road. So by putting it a little further away from the junction there, we should have hopefully eliminated that possibility. Although there is still the chance, we'll just have to monitor it and keep an eye on it and see what happens. Anyway, now we can set up the line for Cochrane. So it's going to be a new line and we'll start here. And the first line can run out this way. Like so. You've opted to use logical platforms except you haven't at the station so we'll alter you there and you can go on to platform three we'll keep the pink color because it does stand out against the other lines that we have in this area and this will be metro metro cochran 01 yes metro cochran 01 will do quite nicely everything else looks good yep we'll accept that and then we can put in a second line straight away heading in the opposite direction you've opted for the correct platform there and there perfect and this will be Metro Cochrane 02 yes and yes absolutely perfect so we can go ahead purchase a few trams for this what do we want so this one's faster has a higher capacity as well they're both the same power rating, which is obviously important for these lines, because they do have to climb these steep hills to get up to the station. And I think, to start with, we shall have six. No, eight. Which will obviously equate to four per line. So let's select them and then give them the matching colour scheme to the line that they're going to be operating on. And they should now start coming out. Here we go. Our first metros, we want to, while I'm here, I've just spotted that this line here is not electrified. So let's electrify that. Yes, these trams don't need electrification, but in the future, obviously, they will do. And if they don't have an electrified line out of the depot, they can't get onto the network. So we'll do that now. That way I won't forget and get frustrated later down the line when I'm scratching my head as to why the trams aren't leaving the depot. Anyway, moving on, let's head back towards Calgary now. We want to set up a similar sort of system for Calgary. So let's go ahead, get the... What am I looking for? Buildings, that's it. Mine went blank there. This time we're going to have six platforms here. The reason being, this is our capital city, and the chances are we're going to have multiple bus lines and metros throughout this as the game progresses. So by future-proofing it now... We leave ourselves with less problems in the future. I'm just going to clear myself a little bit of space there. And what I want to do here is rather than connect it directly to the station, is I'm going to run a road in front of the station for the connection. Don't need the trams here. The trams aren't actually going to come this way. This is just to activate the station connection point. And then you want to head out this away. Give ourselves plenty of room to work with. And I'll show you why when we put the passenger station down and you can connect it into there perfect now we can put the passenger station the reason I'm giving myself plenty of room here is because there's every possibility that in the future we might have more than six platforms on this station so by giving ourselves room to expand in either direction that's gonna help massively is that electrified it is not. Let's try that. Is it like no? I right, will. It'll right. Ignore me. Ignore me. We'll consort it in a moment. What I'm also going to do, as you can see, is extend the length of the platforms to increase their capacity before they get overloaded and passengers give up trying to catch the tram or the bus. And it also makes it a little bit more symmetrical. It's not quite in the middle with the station, but it's better than it was. Now we want a street access point. Electrified, please. Thank you. But I think now if we... 
go to the road tools and select upgrade that should electrify the yes there we go now we're electrified so now we can just continue with our road production we want electrified and if you in fact you can just come straight out there there's no point curving and you can come to there yes and I think we may as well have a connection that way again just for future expansion purposes so now where do we want our initial metro to run through Calgary I'm gonna say we head this away and then down here around the back of this little residential zone we probably want to include this passenger terminus as well so we'll do that and then come back out this way and then there you go I think for our initial metro that will work quite nicely so let's get these named up correctly Calgary Central Interchange there we go that's just Calgary that's absolutely fine Calgary Central Exchange yes that's fine so now we want to put in a few metro stops in the city so our first ones can they can go there we have no lines running down there so that's okay and then we'll have some up here again we'll do one on either side of the road so we'll put two down per stop and then you're going to come into there and then you're going to leave it this way and then you're going to head down here and then that's how you're going to route yourself back in to the central exchange there or the interchange i should say okay do we want to modify our existing bus lines to also include this for now i'm going to say no but it may be something we want to do in the future so for now let's just focus on getting a dedicated metro set up and you're going to come this way in fact stop before we do anything else we need to expand the capacity on this station here because both of those platforms are in use already and I don't want to be sharing platforms if it can be avoided so there we go that's that taken care of now we can return to the line manager so yes you're at Hillcrest Street then you're coming this way instead of using platform 2 please use platform number 1 so there's no sharing perfect and then we had you running out this way didn't we yes there we go to Highland Street and then to Jackson Street and then you're coming in here however I'd rather you use a different platform at the central interchange platform number four and instead of coming back out this way I want you to come out this way so to make sure you do that we are going to need some waypoints say one there one there and if we put a couple here as well we can guarantee that our second line isn't going the wrong way as well so now back to the line manager so after there you're coming this way that's better and this will be Metro Calgary 01 and then we can have the second line now set up heading in the opposite direction so we'll just follow the first line and it set himself up perfectly at the first time of asking. I think we'll go for a different colour for this one because it's quite similar to the first line. Shall we have, say, black? Yep, that provides a decent enough contrast between the two lines. However, here you haven't gone to the right platform, so let's change that. There we go, platform four. And this is Metro 02 or Metro Calgary 02. There we go. Is everything electrified as it should be? I believe so. As I said, however, at this point in time, it doesn't really matter as our trams are not electrified yet. But in the future, in the near future, I hope they will be. So let's get a tram depot for Calgary and we'll set him back here. Okay, so now we can get the vehicles purchased. Again, we'll go for... In fact, I'll go for 10 for this city because it's a little bit larger. So therefore it's more populous. So the trams may have more passengers wanting to use it. So Metro 02. These were 
that sort of colour, yes. And your Metro 01. There we go. Here's Calgary's first trams leaving the depot. Very nice indeed. So now, the last thing we want to do is actually get a train on this line, don't we? Yes, indeed we do. We're going to need a crossover, a diamond, because this is dual track the whole way, so we may as well have it one directional. Therefore, we are going to need that so the trains can cross over onto the appropriate platform. Not too concerned about the speed at this point, if I'm honest. So now we can put some signals in, and these, as I said, will be one-way signals. And to start with, we'll put one at each end, just before the diamond that we've just put in place at each station. And then we'll put just a handful of blocks along the line. At this point, I'm going to try and avoid putting any signals in the tunnels, because they are not illuminated. So in my mind, the, you know, the driver, the engineer would not be able to see the signal in the dark of the tunnel. So we'll keep them in the open air. We don't need that many. We're not going to have a, you know, a great deal of trains running down here straight off the bat. But we just want enough to separate them nicely. That should do. What are we missing? We are missing a depot. However, what we can do is have a branch point from this line, from the freight line like this which connects in to this line up here if again if it is going to be possible to achieve let's see the speed is largely irrelevant this is just to gain access between the two lines so we can do it which is excellent so now we can just use our very first depot which is all the way over here however before we buy the train we obviously want to set up the train line. So you're going from Calgary to Cochrane. You've gone for purple. As this is our first line, let's give it a nice bold colour. I'm going to say yellow. And this is our first intercity. This is Intercity Express. No, it's not necessarily going to be an express line, is it? This is just Intercity and it's Calgary Cochrane. There we go, now we can go and get the train. Now that he has a line to be assigned to. Speed is paramount for this, so let's go for the Virginia and Truckee, which does 50 miles per hour. And we want passenger wagons. Both do 50, this has higher capacity, same loading speed, fewer emissions, so we'll opt for this one. And we'll colour it yellow, so it stands out when we can see it on the map. I think for now, three carriages is going to be more than enough, but we will get two trains, and let's get them assigned now. Okay, there we go. The trains have been assigned, so they should start making their way out now. Let's have a look. Here they come with their yellow rooftop carriages. Makes them easily identifiable when we're hovering above. Shall we climb on board for a few moments? And get a decent view of this train this brand new shiny train it's not going to stay that way its maintenance hasn't been changed so it will very soon become dilapidated but for now that's okay so we don't have clearance we are waiting for the logging train which is just coming around the corner there as we can see so if we hop over this side of the track we should get a decent view of both of the trains passing one another well they're not passing one another he's passing us isn't he we are giving him right of way. Here he comes now. Not nearly as clean or as shiny as the train that we are interested in, but never mind. He's a bit of a workhorse. He seems to be going quite slow. What speed are you doing? 24 miles per hour. Perhaps we need stronger, more powerful trains here then on this line. However, I think the line is still fairly profitable. Oh, it's very profitable, so it's not doing it any harm, but it could be better. And because it's not actually having any, you know, it's not sent us into non-profit, we will keep it as is for the time being. As soon as this train 
hopefully, in fact we might need a clearing signal now that I think about it, so we'll add a clearing signal there. Which should mean as soon as he clears this signal, this gives a go order for this train to start making his way out as well. Now because I want to get these trains onto their own line as quickly as we can, I'm going to put a few extra blocks in this passing loop. So they can all start heading out. Let's just check now that our passenger train is underway. Indeed he is. So let's get back on board. Hopefully won't be interrupted with another wait at a signal. Get inside the tunnel so we can actually see the train. Very nice train indeed. But as I said, it won't be long before he's as dirty and as rusty as the logging train that we just passed there. Or that just passed us, I should say. But for the early game, that's fine. I don't really mess about with the maintenance until we are extremely well established. And we can afford to pay the increased maintenance costs on our vehicles. Likewise, if we have vehicles that don't even go near any residential areas in our towns and cities I don't bother with the maintenance at all it's just not really affecting anything all it does affect is the amount of noise pollution the vehicle generates and if that vehicle isn't going there residential areas then the amount of noise pollution it is generating is irrelevant okay so let's hop off now so there's our first passenger line set up Hopefully we might start seeing some passenger generation at our stations. We have generation at our metro stations in the towns, which is good. Nobody waiting at the train station yet, however. Let's check in Calgary and see if that's the same situation there. Yes, it is. But the idea, hopefully, is that some of these passengers here, yes, one of them is heading to the central interchange, so clearly he is going to Cochrane, or she. Now, while we're in this area, I think it's probably not a bad idea to have some connections set up on these tracks here. I mean, they might not necessarily be using these lines, but it just looks a bit odd having them sitting empty. So if we put some junctions in so they can get onto these platforms as well, it just makes it look a bit more complete. We'll do the same on this side as well. I'm just gonna. Okay, these are gonna head out towards Ocotox, Peridis, Black Diamond, and so forth. So, in terms of which way I want the tracks to be aiming as they leave the station, in fact, we will keep it straight and it can bridge over and then bypass Calgary South East, I believe that is. So we'll do that just as a marker of sorts. So for now that's going to do. That's not necessarily how the track is going to be long term. But just as a quick solution to you know, connect them into the network, it'll work. What I'm going to do now is just go over the tracks with our ballast paint tool to remove the grass that is generated between the two tracks. And I'll put a jump cut in here. So you don't have to watch all of this because it does take a little bit of time and it's not really the most interesting thing to watch so we'll be back in a moment. Okay so I've finished painting in the ballast between the tracks. We have our first passenger waiting to go to Calgary which is pleasing to see. Let's have a look if we've got anybody waiting at Calgary. We should have at least one because we saw them waiting at the metro stop here Jackson Street no they've not arrived yet perhaps they're on this metro here let's see what happens when they disembark okay so we have one two three four five passengers disembarked so that to me means all five are going to be heading to the station I've just realized they have to walk all the way around here to get over to there but I think we can put a quick fix in for that. And in fact, it will also help with future proofing by extending this station back like so. Does that provide a path? No, it does not. 
However, what we can do, which won't affect much of anything else, but it will give a connection to the station here, is put a little side street in like this, connect it in like that, and we'll do the same on this side of the passenger station as well. Yes. Now they can just walk down this road and get in like that, rather than having to walk all the way around here. Since I've started these platforms, I may as well finish them. They're not going to be used, perhaps not for quite a while. But that's okay. Why are you telling me you're colliding? What are you colliding with exactly? I'm not quite sure. Well, we have some weirdly shaped, not shaped, but uh, we have some shorter platforms. At least it adds variety, if nothing else, I suppose. So there we go. Now, while we're waiting for things to pick up, what I'm going to do here is colour in this grass area. Is that the same as the asphalt from the station? I don't think it is. That definitely isn't. That definitely isn't. It must have been that one. Maybe it's just my... Oh, yeah, it, that is right. Yes, I'm just going to colour in this grass here and have it as a full concreted area, like so. And I'm going to hold the shift key down as I do this so it gets right up to the edge and paints over the other, other uh, ground. I can't think of the correct way to describe that. And that just makes it look like a complete unit almost, if you know what I mean. What we could also do, just as a bit of scenery, not, not put an industry down. Yes, there's a bit of scenery, we could put a shop in this area. Third, no, that's, this isn't a way, is that? Yes. No, they're not the ones I want. Let me try and quickly find the ones I want. I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, well, I can't find the ones I was looking for, so we'll stick to these. And we're just going to put a few buildings in this area as well. To, you know, they're, they're shops, if you know what I mean. Because you would have shops in this area, wouldn't you? A little, a little paper shop and somewhere to buy a sandwich, that sort of thing. So we'll put some of these in. We don't want era B, they're too modern. So we are going to have to remember to upgrade these to the new eras as we progress through the decades. But for now they should work quite nicely. We could have... Do we have any like market stalls? I think we do. We could have a few little market area, a little market area here as well. Like so. You know, where our market traders can peddle their wares to the passengers as they come and go in this area just adds a bit of decoration to it all, makes it look a bit more alive. What else do we have? Stands. Oh, you could have a few fruit and veg stalls like this. Apples, oranges, pears, potatoes, whatever you want to buy. We've got you covered. There we go. It just adds a little bit extra to the scenery and to the area. We can work on it a bit more later, just as a a quick starting point, I will leave it at that. What we can also do is put in a person magnet, which is this. We want it to be commercial. And if we use a lamppost, well, it doesn't matter because it's going to be inside this building. Like that. And like that. That will attract people to come into these buildings, or it looks like they're going into the buildings. So it makes them, again, just appear that little bit more alive. We have 20 passengers already. That is a lot more than I expected we'd be having, which is brilliant. Has our first train had a pickup yet? Indeed, he has. How many did you drop off in your first run? Let's have a look. I can't remember where where you see it. Oh, it's on here, isn't it? Charts. You dropped off one person. <laughs> okay, well, our maiden voyage has been complete with our maiden passenger. I hope they enjoyed it. They had the train all to themselves, so a wide selection of seating available for them without any concerns. But it's picked up a bit more now, as you can see we've got 20 on here, so just under half capacity. We've already got some more passengers arriving as well. 
In Cochrane, do we have anybody waiting? No, we do not. But we have people waiting for the metro to take them away from the station and into the city, which is brilliant. And we have a decent smattering of people in and around town wanting to get on the metro as well. Is that the same over in Calgary? One would assume it is going to be. Yes, not as many, surprisingly, but never mind, never mind. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe this is a decent enough point to end this episode for today. In the next episode, what shall we work on? We could extend our passenger line and connect into some extra cities. Perhaps we could run up to Bottrell. We could have a line that goes towards Airdrie and Iricana. Or we could head in the other direction, which has not had much attention yet, and head out towards somewhere like Okotox or High River. Or even one that goes straight through all three and terminates at Nanton. That would be quite a nice little run there. I think that's what we'll do. We've made a start on our passenger line, so we may as well progress with it even further while we're in the zone. But yes, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a little thumbs up on the episode. And also, if you're not already a subscriber, why don't you go ahead and subscribe as well for more content. I do try and upload, at, you know, daily where possible, but that isn't always the case due to work and other commitments outside of sitting on my arse making YouTube videos. But yes, I, I at least get two or three videos up a week at the bare minimum. So all that means for me to say is take very good care of yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Ta-ta for now.